Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today is my last video of 2020, which seems a little bit crazy, just as crazy as this year has been. And if you've watched my channel for the last year or so, you'll know the last video I do of every year is a favourites video. So let's get started, let's get into it. My first favourite thing of this year, location. Now this is probably the trickiest category this year as I've only been able to get away once this year and that's to Arras in France which I really enjoyed and I actually shot some Lomography Lady Grey film out there which I'll link down below and made a video but weirdly I haven't actually gone for that I've gone for somewhere where I've been loads of times and that is the Seven Sisters. During these last eight months or so when I haven't been able to travel I've returned to local spots and have found a new appreciation for them. Like I mentioned in my five reasons to photograph your hometown video I feel quite sensitised to my hometown and surrounding areas, but looking at them with a new eye and appreciating nature even more than ever, I really enjoyed my trip to the Seven Sisters where I photographed Lomography's new Phantom film. Next up, my favourite camera I've used this year. With everything going on this year, I haven't been able to get out and do my usual charity shop camera hauls, so I've actually, weirdly enough, gone with the Olympus Trip 35. And of course I made a video on it and link that down below. I didn't pick it because of its quality, I know they are very temperamental cameras, especially as the meter is powered by selenium, but somehow this was actually the first time I ever shot a rangefinder. And I was actually a bit apprehensive about shooting a rangefinder system for the first time, I think so I almost put a weird pressure on myself to really like it, um, but I had a lot of fun shooting this camera, it's a super basic one, but I really enjoyed the rangefinder system, so yeah, I'm going to go with the Olympus Trip 35, which I didn't think I'd say at the beginning of this year. <laughs> Next up, my favourite film. And if you asked me this at the beginning of the year, I wouldn't think I would be saying Lomography Metropolis. Um, I had to shoot it a couple more times after the first time to actually like it and enjoy shooting it. But I'm going to go with Lomography Metropolis. And very quickly, a shout out to Chris B, an amazing YouTuber, photographer and podcast host of Analog Talk. Her image is now being used on the box of Metropolis, which is super cool. The first time I shot this film was indoors and the images were pretty much all underexposed, super grainy and just kind of lacked a bit of soul. But then the second time I shot it was on a photo walk organised by the London Camera Project and I fell in love with it. It was probably one of my favourite contact sheets I've shot over this last year. Featuring some of my favourite street images I've taken for a long while. I think it's a mixture of liking the images aesthetically and my sentimental connection to the last time I was out and about shooting film with people before Corona hit. I've already mentioned Lomography a couple of times in this video and in the past my relationship mainly with Lomography cameras has been a bit hit and miss but all their films I've shot this year I've actually really enjoyed. Next up, my favourite photo book. I think 2020 has been the year of the YouTuber photo book. There's been some incredible work put out there by people like Matt Day, Willem, Joe Greer and the books have done amazingly well, as they should, because the quality of work is just incredible. I think with everything going on this year, it's kind of given us the room to reflect and the want to reflect on our own archives. Um, I think that's certainly true for me, why I created my zine. But my favourite photo book or zine of this year I've actually gone for is, I'll go get it, from Jamie Maldonado, Lazaretto. Now, Jamie, you probably know him, if not, I'll link him down below, is a fellow YouTuber, photographer. And I've gone with this book because I've only recently received it, actually, but the creativity behind it is insane. So he created these images during lockdown through FaceTime, which just like to comprehend directing someone, directing a model is crazy. Um, but to come up with a book like this and have all these stunning images and the portraits, they're brilliant. I think it's around 64 pages. And I would highly recommend it. The creativity to photograph through FaceTime and create images like this is, yeah. Oh, and it came with some really nice postcard and a print. So thank you, Jamie. Um, yes, yeah, so a big fan of the creativity behind this book. Next up, photography YouTubers. This one was really hard for me to pick out a few people. I think it's kind of impossible. There's so many incredible people part of this community on YouTube. And you know, with lockdown stuff, I've had more time to watch people and I think the quality is just amazing and I love the support everyone has within this community, looking out for each other and sharing their knowledge. And that's why the first person I've gone for is Ribsy. He's just changing the game of developing and sharing his knowledge, which I think is so important. 
And if you don't already, I'd strongly recommend following him on both YouTube and Instagram so you kind of get everything from him. And he's always sharing tips and tricks with techniques when it comes to home developing. And also on top of that, he's a great photographer. So definitely Ribsy is my number one. Next, I'm gonna go for, I'm really sorry about the pronunciation, Ryan Bandara. I'm not sure if I pronounced that right. Ryan has been an amazing supporter of this channel, which I really, really appreciate. Uh, but that's not why I'm picking him. I'm picking him because he's uploaded some really amazing videos. He's only uploaded a few videos so far, starting a few months ago, but I love his style. He doesn't appear in frame, instead he lets the images do the talking. He creates this super relaxing aesthetic that transports you to the cities he's photographed. And last up, Sophia Carey, a UK-based fashion photographer who does delve into different genres. I love her videos because she shares a range of film-centered content from how-tos, shoots and behind the scenes, as well as a few digital shoots. And she's just started a monthly series talking about the business side of photography, which is really insightful. Next up, the big one, or the big one for me, my favourite photo I've taken of 2020. And this was a really, really hard pick, and I kind of narrowed it down by wanting to go for a black and white image, just to represent me falling back in love with black and white images. In the end, I went with this frame, shot on Ilford's Pan F+. I shot it on a brilliant day in London with my friend Emily, a big thank you to her for helping me out, while shooting a promo sort of thing for my scene. I love the tones created with this ISO 50 film, and that day I got a load of frames I'm really happy with. So that is it, my favourite things of this year. I think this year has been super challenging for a lot of people, but it was really nice reflecting on my favourite moments, my favourite locations, where, <laughs> even though it was pretty close, my favourite photo, camera. If you haven't already, I'd really recommend it. Just kind of looking over what you've done and you'll probably be surprised at how many images you have shot. But before we go, I wanted to give you a year of rejections update. And <laughs> you may have no idea what I'm talking about, but I wanted to loop it back. This was my first video of the year I did, and it was talking all about aiming for 100 rejections in a year. It was all based on an article I read about changing your perspective when it comes to rejection, on things like open calls, magazine submissions, and funding applications. And if you're interested, I'll link that video below. And you can start it whenever you want, it doesn't have to be in January, it's just a little easier to keep track of your progress. So, the big question, did I reach 100 rejections? No, not even close. In the end, I didn't even apply for 100 things, I submitted for 65 things. But that being said, I did get accepted for 15 things, which is a success rate of around 23%, which I'm really happy with. And it also led me to submitting things I never would have or going things I would have ever done. I did a fashion shoot, I know me in fashion, I did a fashion shoot on my friend's flat and it ended up in Morden magazine. But honestly, the main reason I don't think I hit 100 rejections or 100 applications was because of everything that happened. Up until March, I was averaging around 15 applications a day. And I do think this is a combination of me being really enthusiastic to this idea of aiming for rejections. But also, you know, everything happened. A lot of things I was going to go for weren't even running anymore, especially things like applying for physical exhibitions. It just wasn't possible. So I think with everything going on, if if Corona didn't hit, I think I definitely would have hit 100 applications at least. Maybe not rejections, but definitely 100 applications to things. But I have already created my spreadsheet, the way I document it, for next year, as I've really loved it. And the reason I did it was to change my perspective on rejection. And it certainly did that. It did it really quickly by sort of March, April time. You know, when you open up that email from someone that says, thank you for applying, um, I regret to inform you. When I read that, I go, oh, no, no, I go, okay, it's fine, I tried, chalk it up to, you know, trying, put it on the spreadsheet, and you move on. So I would really recommend it, especially if you had the same sort of relationship with being rejected for things as I had, you know, just for a few hours, it could really get to me. But I move on super quickly, you put everything into the application, if you fail, you learn from it and you move on. So I would definitely recommend it, and yeah, check out the video if you're a bit confused about the... Uh, <laughs> about what it is or if you want to read the article which I'll link it to and what it's based on. And in that video I answered a question I get asked a lot in relation to submitting your work things and that is should I pay for things? And in the video I said I was going to be really fussy and only apply or pay for things where I was going to get something in return so maybe like a portfolio review or I really respected the judges and stuff like that. But out of the 65 things I applied for I paid for none of them in the end. And this is down to me being a bit fussy and stingy, 
but also I lost my job in March um, and it's just really hard to justify spending any money on competitions and open calls when your main source of income has gone it's just super hard to justify and even now I'm earning again got a job again I'm still sort of in that mindset it's still quite hard for me to justify even disposable income so I will only do it if I'm really sure that I'm going to get something out of it even if I don't get accepted like a portfolio review so that is it my 2020 favorites which uh, such a strange year and it was kind of a strange video to put together looking over things but it was really nice as well and this year the support for my channel for my zine I put out has been so unexpected and crazy and next year I've got some really big things planned which I'm really excited for. The wheels are already in motion for them, they're going to take a few months, I've got a few projects on the go but I'm really really excited so just a huge thank you for all the support, I really really appreciate the community and everyone who watches my videos, shares them, comments, everything. Um, so yeah, huge thank you and I'll see you next year. Oh.